Hi, in this video we will be talking about how to change the behavior of our cloth in Obicloth version 5. As you can see here, I have a piece of cloth that has been attached by its four corners and I have a spherical collider right under it. If I move the collider around, you would see that the cloth it's, it is quite, uh, quite rigid, doesn't really bend a lot and doesn't have any wrinkles. So how can we fix that? Well, we have a lot of constraint parameters here in the cloth inspector. We have distance constraints, which are responsible for the stretching of the cloth, bend constraints, which are responsible for the bending of the cloth and wrinkling. We have volume constraints, which are mainly used to create inflatables, uh, which can only be created from closed meshes, like a spherical mesh or a balloon of some sort. We won't be using them here. Then we have aerodynamics and tether constraints, which we used in our previous video. For now, let's, let's focus on distance constraints and bend constraints. If I disable bend constraints entirely, you would see that suddenly the cloth uh, looks a lot more like cloth and some wrinkles have appeared around the, around the collider. Um, sometimes we might want to do that, disable the bend constraints entirely, but more often we'll have to have them enabled and increase the max bending threshold instead so that the cloth can bend a little bit more. Using this parameter, we can control how resistant to wrinkling the cloth is. We could also reduce the max bending to zero and increase the compliance of the main constraints. Compliance is the inverse of the stiffness, so if you increase compliance, you are allowing main constraints to be more elastic. If I increase it a little bit, you would see that we get a very similar effect that we did when increasing the max bending. Okay, uh, let's see what happens now with distance constraints. If I disable distance constraints, well, uh, cloth pretty much loses its entire structure because distance constraints are the ones in charge of keeping particles together. Uh, if I wanted to make this cloth look a little bit more light, more like maybe silk or some similar fabric, I could increase the uh, max compression amount in distance constraints, which will allow vertices to get closer to each other. I'm going to enable, say, that wireframe mode here to be able to see it clearly. If I increase the max compression, you would see that the cloth edges are allowed to, to compress and make vertices get closer to each other. This way we can have a cloth that looks a little bit more like silk or something like that. If we wanted to go to the opposite side of the spectrum, we could reduce max compression, we could reduce the compliance and the bending constraints and then we have a cloth that's as stiff as possible both stretching the stiffness and bending the stiffness uh, sometimes we would want to get very 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 high stiffness and that's only possible if we give the solver enough budget to reach it that can be done by either increasing the amount of substeps or increasing the amount of iterations spent in each constraint type. So for instance, if we wanted to reduce stretching in the cloth, we could increase the amount of distance constraint iterations to maybe 10. And that would give the solver a little bit more time to spend on distance constraints alone. The rest of constraints, bending constraints, collisions, etc. would still take the same amount of time to be calculated. So you can think of the substeps parameter as a multiplier on the amount of iterations spent for every constraint type. So for instance, if we set the amount of substeps to one, 
who would be spending 10 iterations in distance constraint, 3 iterations in bending constraints. If we set it to 2, we would be spending 20 iterations in distance constraints and 6 iterations in bending constraints. You can think of this in, the, in that way, but it isn't exactly like that. It's usually more efficient to increase the amount of sub-steps than increase the amount of iterations in a given constraint type, but you can juggle around with both parameters till you hit a sweet spot where you get the behavior you need and the performance you want. This is all for this video, see you in the next one.